there's my understanding is that there's two major ways to invest active and passive and my understanding is you're um advocating for towards people to passively invest Correct. my question would be it it looks like whenever you are heavily involved you have the potential not only for higher risk but also for higher reward why would you suggest uh, for the general public to go into passive investing instead and why are the major advantages other than not having to be actively like looking into it so great question in fact the the next blog post maybe not the next blog post but the blog post i'm working on at the moment is is just about act the drawbacks of being an active investor um some of them off the top of my head are it's it's a lot more work the research indicates that the odds are very much against you it's an intoxicating thing to do by the way i, I actually achieved financial independence being an active investor and there are few things more intoxicating than and you can vouch for this with your tesla stock than picking a, a company investing in the stock and then having it work and that's a that's a wonderful feeling and at least that's the flame that kept this moth going back to it. But the problem is it's very, very difficult to do that consistently. And when you, if you really sit back and objectively measure your results across all the companies you're investing in, the research tells us that over the long term, it's going to be very hard to outperform the index. Now, it's hard to say that for individual investors because they're not monitored, but it's categorically true of professionals. And certainly individual investors have some advantages over professionals, right? Professionals have pressure to perform quarter to quarter that perhaps forces them to make buying decisions that might not be the best for the long term that an individual wouldn't have. But the corollary of that is the professionals have an arsenal of tools at their disposal that the individual doesn't have. And I don't know, I look at that. The analogy that I, that I use in the book if you think you want to be an active investor, the first question you should ask yourself is, am I Warren Buffett? And if the answer to that is no, then you should probably be an indexer. Uh, it's the same reason I wouldn't get in the ring with Mike Tyson. I could engage Angelo, of course, I'm dating myself, but back in the day, I could have engaged Angelo Dundee. I could have gone through all the same training that Tyson went through. And you know what? It still would have been a really bad idea. <laughs> so, thank you. And as a follow up to the same question, sure. how about how about uh, starting compared to starting a business, or for example, real estate, where you can actually like rent it out and have some tax advantages? Sure. So let's start with the real estate comparison first, and then I'll I'll talk about the business because that's a question that I, I get a fair amount. So there is, there's no question that there's a lot of money to be made investing in real estate. And a lot of fortunes have been made investing in real estate. And I imagine in this room, there are people who have made quite a bit. In fact, I know in this room, there are people who have made quite a bit of money in real estate. I think the comparison, though, is not VTSAX or index funds versus a given real estate investment, but VTSAX versus investing in real estate and investing your time. Because real estate is, if you invest in real estate, you're investing in a business, basically. And like any business, you'd better take the time to learn how that business works and to study it and to make sure that you don't make the mistakes that they make. And I don't have a copy of that that I describe in that particular book. So you're really comparing a past, very passive investment with a fairly active investment, even if you set it up to be passive with, act, with uh, property managers and what have you, you still have to manage them. So I think that's the comparison. And if that's how you want to spend your time, if you want to spend your time building a real estate business, then that's a wonderful path for making money. And I have no argument with it. I've invested in real estate successfully in the past for me. It's too much like work, but that doesn't mean you can't make money doing it. My answer for any kind of business would be the same. Uh, starting a business, if you're successful with it, and my little blog and book has turned into a surprisingly successful business, it's, it's a great option. 
but it's a different kind of animal. I think it's an apples and oranges sort of comparison, if that makes sense. It does. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Back to your, his first question, most active investors don't consistently beat the indexes over a, the, the longer you stretch out the amount of time, they don't beat it. And if they do, it's hard to tell if they've done it due to luck or, or some other factor. I mean, right. like even Warren Buffett, we talked about before, he hasn't beaten the markets in a long time. Yeah, there, there was, a, I can't think of who, who wrote it, but recently I came across a, a, an article and they were talking about Bill Miller, actually, who was a very, very successful uh, fund manager. And he outpaced the market for 15 years in a row or something, which is a phenomenal result. And then suddenly he didn't. I mean, suddenly his, you know, his approach simply didn't work anymore because the market moved in a, in a different direction. And the person who was writing the article, uh, I, I can't quote it, I can't quote it very well, but basically said, you know, the, the headline here shouldn't be Bill Miller beats the market. The headline should be something to the effect of somebody was bound to beat the market over 15 years. Oh, it happened to be this lucky man, Bill Miller. And I draw the analogy that with the lottery. So when you have the lottery and you have all these people going out and buying tickets, all these different number combinations, one of them, sometimes a couple of them, are going to turn out to be the winning lottery combination and that person's going to be rich. Nobody, at least I hope, nobody is silly enough to look at that and say, ah, John has figured out how to pick winning lottery numbers, right? We don't, we don't think that. We all sit back and we say, John got extraordinarily lucky. And there's a fairly accurate, I think, school of thought that says when you look at people like Bill Miller, and I don't mean to take anything away from him in particular, you have to ask yourself, is that really skill or are you looking at a lottery winner? And there seems to be a lot of research that indicates that it's a lottery winner. You mentioned Warren Buffett hasn't outperformed the market for a long time. I didn't. I didn't know that. But yeah, they published their results, yeah. and it, it, it's so complicated. For the best, it's hard to do. Yeah, it's so complicated. Your stock price is not necessarily a reflection on the business either. So maybe his businesses are doing great, and the stock price just isn't reflected in it for right. whatever reason. Just another complication for active investors. 